again, Felix. Today we're going to talk about gastritis symptoms. What you're going to take out of this video are two things. First, we're going to talk about the early symptoms of gastritis, how you can find out if you have gastritis, and number two, the three hidden causes that are often overlooked that are one of the basis foundation for causing gastritis. If you stick to me through the end, I'm going to give you a bonus tip how you can get started right away to heal gastritis naturally. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Peggy Schirmer. Welcome to Gut Feelings. On the channel, we help you to cleanse your body from toxins and heal your digestion so you can get your full energy back at any time in your life. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to jump into the first part right away, finding out what are some early signs and some typical symptoms if you have gastritis. Number one, most commonly and probably the most excruciating one, is abdominal pain. This burning, cramping sensation, either if you have an empty stomach or after a meal, sometimes before a meal, it fluctuates. One of my clients described it as having the feeling of having broken glass in the stomach, which can last for 30 minutes, an hour or longer and can flare up anytime. As for the most common one, the second most common one is feeling nausea. Often people don't really realize how much nausea actually can have to do with gastritis and it can come in combination with anxiety, with food related physical anxiety. And number three, this is well known, is heartburn, GERD, acid reflux. You feel there's like burning acid coming up your esophagus, feel it behind the sternum very typical for gastritis. Now, if you experience those symptoms, what causes them? Why do you have them? This is what we're going to talk about now in the third part, the three most common underlying symptoms that cause GERD. Number one, this is the most important one, guys, and this is most overlooked and most misunderstood. It has to do with your stomach acid. Now, often, usual doctors, normal traditional doctors, they tell you to have too much stomach acid. This is why they give you anti-acids, which block your stomach acid. The worst thing you can do. Why? Because your stomach acid is not the problem. Your stomach acid is not aggressive. It's not attacking your mucus lining. This is not the acid we are talking about. You have too much acid in the stomach, but it's not your own stomach acid. It's pathogenic acid. Pathogens like H. Richa coli, H. pylori you might have heard of, but also viruses like shingles and Epstein-Barr or bacteria resistant strains of strep, they produce acids if they are in the stomach, if they are overtaken. The reason why they are there is because you are low in stomach acid. Stomach acid is there to protect your body and protect also the rest of your gut from pathogens. So after your mouth then becomes through the esophagus, the pathogens and they meet the stomach and here they get killed. This is why it's, this is so acid, it has a pH of 2 or 3, the real stomach acid and it kills off those bacteria. But if you don't have enough stomach acid, then bacteria takes over and produces acid. And this is the acid that's coming up, it's not your stomach acid. So what you want to work on is improving your stomach acid. I've got several videos just about stomach acid, which I'm happily linking you up here. Also down there in the description, make sure you watch them after this video. And as we're already talking about it, one other interesting thing about this whole stomach acid and bacteria issue that most people don't know and misunderstand because it's what they've been told from the doctor. So if you have, for example, SIBO, you, have, you are told that SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth means you have a resistant strain of strep in your small intestine. But bacteria, pathogenic bacteria, same like beneficial bacteria, doesn't only travel from up to down. Bacteria can travel everywhere. Viruses can travel everywhere. Fungus can travel, candida can travel up and down through your intestinal tract. This is important to know when you understand what really causes your digestive issues. Number one, you have not enough stomach acid and too much pathogens, pathogenic acid that is coming up through heartburn, for example. Cause number two is a big one, guys. This, is a, this one is so overlooked. That's why I'm making this really, really important, guys. And that is stress. I know on the channel we talk a lot about diet, about lifestyle, but stress, guys, stress is one of the major causes for gastritis. It often comes then together in combination with high toxicity, low stomach acid, bad eating habits. 
But stress, emotional stress, worrying about things, not taking enough pauses, don't resting well, don't sleep enough. You don't take a real break for eating, you just eat like this. Eat when you're stressed. This causes a major sh stress on your stomach and can cause gastritis. Number three, this is a common one, a very, very common one. I see that a lot with my clients and that is through toxins. Toxins can cause gastritis and toxins are not just toxins from alcohol and pathogens and heavy metals, but they are also often caused by medication. If you, if you have or you're still taking antibiotics, for example, painkillers, anti-inflammatory medicine, this all can cause like more stress on your digestive system, especially on your stomach. It can literally burn itself in there, burn itself. It's a very sensitive mucus lining that you have in the stomach and that protects the, 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 the cells in the stomach from the acid. Yeah, this is why this is there. But then if you have antibiotics, for example, sitting in there and burning, really like burning scars in there, then the acid will trigger this pain. And of course, toxic heavy metals like mercury, which are often in fish, also in antibiotics, by the way. But everything you get, like all the air pollution, chemtrails, you name it, contaminated food, can all cause gastritis and inflame your intestinal lining. Okay, guys, now before you start crying, I know this is like sounds horrible. I always want to give you something to take away that you can do right now. That's what we're going to do, talk about in the bonus tip. But before we're going to get there, I want to know from you question of the day. Would you like me to talk more about a specific gastritis diet, what you can eat and what you shouldn't eat if you have gastritis? If that interests you, comment now below and just write something like yes. And I'm going to count the yeses. If there's enough engagement from you, I'm happy to produce another video just on this topic. Another thing that I want to know from you, apart from if you're interested in your strike style, I also want to know from you if you have some foods that you know you're eating that actually are good, that you feel like, oh my God, this is helping my gastritis. Share your knowledge in the comments below now, pause the video, and then we're going to come back to the bonus tip. Are you ready? Are you done? Now, summary so far, what we learned in this video, most common symptoms of gastritis are heartburn, nausea, anxiety, abdominal pain, and those are caused by three major things. Number one, stomach acid, you don't have enough stomach acid, medication and more toxins, and stress, emotional stress, worrying, anything like that. Now, what you can do right now to get started to heal your gastritis, first of all, you want to make sure when you eat something, you don't drink. It's either eating or drinking. I've got a fun video about that, which I'm happily linking up here and also in the description below about my habits in restaurants with always, where friends always say like, what's she doing? Why is she not eating and drinking? And I'll talk about that in more detail. But basically, why is good for gastritis not to eat and drink because you water down your stomach acid and make it harder for your body to absorb the nutrients and to digest the food. Number two, what you want to do to improve your gastritis right now is you never want to eat when you're stressed. If you're stressed and you're hungry, drink something. Best thing is coconut water, cucumber water, celery juice, lemon water. Don't eat. Don't eat anything if you're stressed. Find another way. And when you when you're worried, anything like that, your body is actually not in the mood to digest. It has like high adrenaline, high cortisol. The body is in survival mode. There's not enough digestive enzymes being secreted. The liver is in another state. So don't eat when you're stressed and take care of your well-being. Take a relaxing bath in the evening. This is also good for gastritis. You want to make sure that you lower the emotional stress and amp up more on healthy healing relationships, people that are good for you, meet friends, listen to ocean music, that's one of my favorites before I fall asleep. You find your way, but lower the stress in your life. Bonus tip number three, eating small portions. When you eat and you have gastritis, you don't want to overeat. No stuffing, the less food combinations, the better. So least ingredients, the better and small portions. So you give your body a chance to actually absorb the nutrients even if you don't have so much stomach acid build up yet. If you haven't done it already, do you want me to make another video about gastritis diet, 
what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat, just about the whole subject, let me know in the comments below and also share your favorite foods that helped you heal so far.